Whenever I've achieved something, I wish I have documented the journey on how I got there. So this is me documenting how I'm gonna become a commercial photographer shooting worldwide campaigns. Um, if you haven't seen my channel before, my name's Luke Sartor. I'm a commercial photographer here in Brisbane, Australia. And all my life, whenever I've achieved something, I wish I had documented the journey on how to get there. So just for my own knowledge of seeing where I come from and also to hopefully pass on to others all the mistakes that I've made and the things that I've done right along the way to get me to where I am. And hopefully in this series that I'm gonna be trying to update weekly, if not weekly, monthly, on what I'm doing to achieve this goal, uh, hopefully you can learn from it and get there quicker than the way that I have. Um, I really value when other people, like watching content of how other people have achieved the things that I want to achieve. So hopefully this can help you too. For this first one, I'm just gonna go through like what I've done since about March last year till in 2023 till now, which is August, 2024 and just the kind of journey there. So we're kind of, we're still really at the only beginning stages, but it's starting to work basically. And I'm hoping that it ends up, it's just like grind, 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 nothing and no one sees and cares about this part, but I'm waiting for that hockey stick where it all just clicks. And that could be two years down the road from when I started to five, but I know that it's gonna be worth it when you're getting paid obscene money to shoot the coolest campaigns and click a button on a camera. So where did it start? It started at the beginning of last year in 2023 when I was just coming to the end of a bit of a crisis of not knowing what to shoot. First part of my prof uh, professional shooting career, I was a boudoir photographer, and moved to Brisbane and thought I wanted to go further with that. I was still working full time at the time, but luckily with the company that I worked for, I had a lot of, I was an even time roster, so a lot of time working, but also the exact same amount of time as time off to pursue photography. And in Brisbane, there was just more volume of work and potential clients, so I knew that that would be the next step in pursuing photography. After about a year, I realized I didn't want to go down that road. Um, I still really enjoyed making beautiful images, but I just didn't want to be in that industry. So I thought I wanted to shoot sport, progressed at shooting uh, sporting events. And again, I realized that the high volume, high turnover of shooting sports is just not for me. I definitely prefer creating the shot and planning an idea went through a bit of a crisis and I didn't know what to shoot and then it come and I stumbled across then my now mentor, Scott Schifino. His uh, YouTube channel is Tin House Studios. Go right now and subscribe to it because his knowledge, uh, just the free stuff he gives away is where what really got me started and then uh, taking him on as a mentor um, and having like check-ins and stuff with him is what really launched me to make a lot of progress. So by following what Scott said and building a great body of work, like a body of work that you are known for and that's your style and shooting personal projects, that's really what started launching me into this new realm of commercial photography because commercial photography just made so much sense to me where the amount you shoot is lower so you're not you know churning through shoots day after day or even week after week but the financial reward for it is higher so that you go and do a handful of shoots a year and then the rest of the time is built making personal work that you really enjoy shooting which in turn gets you the higher paying commercial work and it's like a big cycle so that made a lot of sense to me and uh seemed like a much more enjoyable way of being a photographer. Obviously though, it's not that easy. So in photography, there's kind of like three levels of photographers I've seen. It's like that zero to $500 mark where it's like, oh, I've got an uncle 
that can come and maybe take some photos for this thing. Then there's like the 500 to 3,000, 5,000 dollar mark, which is where most photographers sort of sit in. And that's like most wedding photographers or small business photographers or event photographers. And don't get me wrong, you can make an absolute fortune in that market. However, you gotta be constantly churning through shoots every day or every week and chasing them like that to be making really good money. Um, and also some of the work just may not be that enjoyable. Um, and if you're gonna take on enjoyable work, it may as well compensate you really well. And then there's this upper echelon. So that's sort of like 75% of photographers and then, or even more. And then there's this upper echelon here where it's like the top five to 1% of photographers sit in here and it's really hard to break into, but that's like your 10K a day plus. And we're talking Australian dollars, but same thing all around the world where it's, you're so specified in the kind of work that you do that, and it has to be so perfect because this could be a campaign that's on billboards or seen by hundreds of thousands of people or on TV and the stakes for that business that you're advertising for is much higher. So you need to be the elite that is shooting that and therefore the compensation for that is much, much higher. Also, a lot of the really cool clients are sitting there as well, like the ones that you want to shoot for. And that's where I want to be. So after meeting my mentor and starting to build my portfolio, I realized I love shooting people, sports and travel. So building my body of work around those themes in my bold, raw, minimal style and having people want me to shoot my way of seeing them or their products or what they want me to shoot for. That doesn't mean that I can't shoot another style for anyone, but I ideally want to be hired for that style. And so far it's paid off pretty well. Most people are wanting me to shoot in that kind of way. From there, I began building my portfolio with a personal project I called Immortals, which I'm still working on, where I want to help 100 athletes take the image that's worthy of their story. And basically, if there's going to be the image that would be on their autobiography or on a Netflix special, like the banner image of that or something like that, and interviewing them as well about why they do what they do, what they're working on, and just the life as a professional athlete. So that was a project I've sunk my teeth into and I'm still working on. I'm about 22% of the way through and started building this portfolio and reaching out to agencies to get my work in front of them. I bought a list of all the agencies in Brisbane. It had like the positions people held, a creative director, their name, their number, and their email. So picking up the phone and just introducing myself and sending my portfolio to these, I was able to get in front of some of the bigger agencies in Brisbane and get them to know who I am. That combined with weekly email marketing about what I'm shooting in that, and especially through the platform I use, which is Squarespace, I can see who is looking at all my work through the back end. Uh, I know these agencies are still seeing what I'm doing and seeing my images. It's just a matter of time before I'm the right dude they're looking for. Or because it's this so hard to get into, you're in that in club that they know can execute and they like you and they'll get you to do the job. After meeting with these agencies, I'm still working full time at this stage. I then realize and talking with my mentor that all the best photographers or most of them have their own agent. Now there's pros and cons of having an agent, but like the big pros is one, you have someone else out there looking for work and batting for you and that offers like its own level of prestige. Two, they can get you higher pay. So instead of you having that uncomfortable conversation sometimes with an, uh, a client, they're out there saying, no, Luke only works for this much a day. Um, this shoot is worth this much for these royalties, whatever. 
And yeah, and having someone out there getting you work um, and putting you forward so you can concentrate doing on what you do best, which is just being an ace photographer. I reached out to here for agents and luckily for me, the first, one of the first ones I reached out to, just it's a lot of right place, right time when you just got to get out there and put yourself out there. She is looking to update her photographer list. Some of them are starting to get a bit older and maybe looking to retire us and I'm just, we, it was like when I meet with, met with my agent, um, Katrine, it was like meeting an Arnie that you haven't caught up with for years. We just talked for like two and a half hours and just got along really well. And she has said that like she hires not just for skill, but uh, not hires, sorry, represents not just for skill, but for personality as well. And yeah, we just jam. So she's taken me on board and is looking to represent me going forward. I've got agent, I'm meeting with agencies and my work is looking commercially viable. So it's in November, at the end of 2023, it's been about March, April, May, March, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. So was that nine months to get myself to the stage where I'm getting my own work, I have an agent, I have a meeting with agencies, people are liking what I do and taking my work um, seriously, I guess, for lack of a better term. You can only have one foot in and one foot out for so long. So I decided to leave my day job and just let's go balls to the wall and make this thing happen. I'm not gonna lie, the the, the initial part, like and even till now, it's a grind and you're like, why am I doing what I'm doing? I'm not earning as much money as I want to or am I gonna earn any money this month? Like this is just the nature of the commercial photography world, uh, talking to my agent and talking to my mentor that you can be busy as hell because I'll have some of those months and then I don't know if I'm gonna make any money this month. Oh my God, ah, ah, ah. And uh, I think that's just the nature of the work, especially until you get really, like when you're very popular and your style is really in fashion, then you just have so much work coming your way. So I'm still working on that. Another thing that allowed me to leave my job and go for this is I live extremely frugally. So if I was someone, I'd, I have no debt, I have plenty of savings, and I was very prepared that sweet, if I earn zero dollars for a year, I'm gonna be okay. Um, and th like that's not gonna happen. I'm still gonna earn money along the way. But if the worst had come to worse and I didn't, it was gonna be all right. It was just all my energy could be dedicated to moving towards the goal of becoming a commercial photographer. So this year, moving down this commercial path, I've made really good progress in getting in front of potential clients and pitching on jobs that I never thought I'd be pitched on, being approached by clients that I, I, one of them I'll tell you about that I cannot believe reached out to me and my work is looking the best it ever has and I now know all the stuff you know what you, when you don't know what you don't know and you look at your work now or you're looking what the elite guys do and you're like, holy, this is all the stuff I was missing about why my work didn't look like them and what I have to do to make it look at that level. And I'm really happy with how the direction that my portfolio is starting to head. So as far as where we're at now, I'm currently, uh, sorry, before we, Quick story, three of the jobs that I've been able to pitch on this year have been a six-figure job, which again, most photographers don't sit in that bracket. That's that one upper echelon, 1% uh, upper echelon. I was approached by an agency to shoot for Nike for a campaign of an Australian athlete going to Paris, which just came out of the blue into my email and I'll, uh, I'll, is my first commercial campaign gonna be shooting for Nike? And then 
The other opportunity that's still yet to come to fruition is I've been approached by a larger agency in Brisbane to shoot something for the Commonwealth Games, uh, advertising for the Commonwealth Games um, that's coming to a Brisbane or the Gold Coast. And even though I haven't won these jobs, uh, two of them I, I missed out on, and the third one is still waiting for that to come. But the fact that I've been able to pitch on these, I know it means I'm moving in the right direction and I feel like it's moving like faster than most people. This isn't to talk myself up, but like it would take most people a lot longer to get to this position than what I have. And it's been because I've had a great mentor, just stayed relentlessly focused on what can I do every day to move myself further towards this goal. And going from not shooting commercial campaigns or even pitching or being in this space as a complete outsider to being asked to pitch on jobs, work on jobs and assist on jobs in uh, just over a year, I think is a pretty fast way to do it. I'd like to, I'd like to move much faster, but hopefully you can learn from future videos about what I've done to get to this stage and you can do it in half the time that I've done it. So yeah, that's the last since March last year, so year and a bit half-ish of where I've come from and some of the steps along the way to where I am now. And going forward, I feel like the next step is to continue to produce the best work that I have that is commercially viable in my voice and style. I thought that I may need to start shooting stuff that I think my clients want to shoot and just to be just to be like everyone else. But the three jobs that I've pitched on have been all sports related, which is where I really would love to sit. And if I can make this happen shooting only what I want to shoot or close to what I want to shoot, that would be awesome. So that's what I'm going to keep doing and we'll see how we go. I hope you learned something from this bit of a ramble for the first one and click that subscribe button so that you can see my journey going forward and hopefully learn from it. And I'd love to hear about your experience on trying to become a commercial photographer wherever you are in the world. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.